Welcome back to The Daily Grind, everyone. So today we're gonna to be prepping this bed and planting some corn. As you can see, it's already sprouted, but I'm gonna show you guys kind of how I got this started. I also did one other thing. Down here, in this part of this bed, I planted sunflower. So sunflower is gonna help keep the birds off of the corn, and I'm hoping that this starts flowering the same time that the corn is developing, okay? That's the plan. It might be a little bit early, so we'll see. But this is mammoth sunflower, the gray striped mammoth, and every single one of those popped up, including some extras, because I put some extra seeds in each hole. So I've got 12 of those. Let's get to it. So this is the bed that I'm gonna be working on. I had recently had some wheat growing here. Actually, this was barley, that was wheat. This corn I'm planting is a popcorn variety. It's not a sweet corn. Right here, I've got sweet corn. And you might be asking, aren't you not supposed to plant two types of corn close together because of cross-pollination, and that is true. However, this corn has been growing for about a month, and we are way past any chance of these two corns cross-pollinating each other because the windows of them growing are gonna be uh, too far apart. Every corn is different in how long it takes for them to produce. So this is, I believe they say 96 days for this corn, and the popcorn variety I'm gonna be planting here is 86 days. So you wouldn't want to necessarily plant these 10 days later <laughs> after these, because they will definitely cross pollinate. You can't even plant them at the same time. So corn is a heavy feeder and you definitely want to amend the soil, especially if you've had things growing in it before. This has been tilled and flattened as best as I can. It's not perfect, but you'll see what we're going to do here in just a minute. Now, I might not have enough seed here to plant this whole bed and I also have a dent corn variety which the dent corn is well over 100 days so actually I could plant both at the exact same time because they're so far apart and when one is going to be ready and the other one is so I'll probably start because that popcorn is pretty small it's short so if I don't have enough to cover the whole bed I can stop at one point and then I can plant the dent corn behind it which is the tallest of all the corn it's even taller than this it, it gets real tall uh, at least that variety that I had gotten. What we are gonna do is we're gonna amend with a little bit of fertilizer. This is some organic chicken fertilizer. So basically it's made with chicken compost. This is a 624, broadcast this through. I'm just gonna kind of shake it. And I mean, you don't need a ton of this. We're just kind of starting to feed the soil here. Well, hello, little guy, kind of scared me. Come on, there you go. Pretty little guy, those um, are really pretty little uh, spiders. They're the jumping spider and they've got blue and black stripes. They're really, really pretty. So this stuff is really inexpensive by the way. I get this at my local feed shop. So where I get the feed for my birds and it's really good stuff. But go to your local feed shops if you guys need some good prices on fertilizer. Uh, if you guys have some. Now, Tractor Supply isn't what I would call a local feed shop, and they don't really have s stuff like this. So this is stuff that is, you know, I, I think this cost me 30 bucks, and it was a huge bag. It, it was probably, a, I, I think, like a 50-pound bag. And it didn't, like I said, it didn't cost me much at all. Uh, 30 bucks for a 50-pound bag, I mean, for a 624, you, this is less expensive, I think, than like some synthetic fertilizers. So ends up being really worth it. So, I mean, really, even though I put a whole lot in there, I probably only put about $1.50 to two bucks worth of this fertilizer because <laughs> maybe, maybe less than that. I mean, it really was not very expensive. All right, so that's broadcasted through. Next, I've got this compost. Now, this is organic compost. You gotta be really careful nowadays. So compost is probably okay with corn uh, because it is a grass, however, I'm not only gonna grow corn in this plot ever, okay? I'm, at one point, I'm gonna probably be growing other stuff that isn't corn that could get hurt by persistent herbicides. And if you get cow manure compost, then you could have some issues with persistent herbicide, which could be detrimental to your crops later in the future. And at one point, then you'll only be able to grow stuff like wheat and corn in this bed because those herbicides are sprayed all over the cow fields and then the cow eats up the the grasses it stays in their system and it's like a five-year half-life 
So for five years, you're kind of stuck, not being able to grow anything other than grasses. Um, so I try not to. Uh, this is organic, it's a little more expensive. This is really important, especially, uh, we're putting on compost, especially when you're using this organic granula fertilizer because this will make that fertilizer readily available a little quicker. This does have micro microbial organisms in it basically increases microbial activity to feed vibrant plants and so that is true because there is molds and stuff you know breaking down this compost over that time and it stays in there and you throw it on there and that's going to just kind of add the microbial growth in your soil and overall whether or not you're using fertilizer it's still good to do so let's go ahead and put this enough talking on my part all right so that's spread out evenly it's not a big big layer guys i mean it's very fine now with especially when you're using a small amount like this you want to cover this so the sun doesn't bleach this compost because it's gonna that sun hitting especially a thin layer like that is just gonna completely void this uh of any nutrients okay i mean you got a couple days but you definitely want to cover it so i've got a bag which i used over here by the way so this stuff but i had a lot of extra uh, this is just a bag of in-ground soil that i bought it's made by miracle grow and it was just something that i had on hand so i only used a quarter of the bag over there um, and then i can use the rest here and we're just going to kind of build this up and that's this stuff right here so it does seem like there's some peat in here uh, but it does look like there's you know a bunch of organic matter you got wood chips and everything seems like okay stuff uh, plus i think there is nutrients in here as well so that's going to help uh, also so that's going to be a big boost right in the beginning for them let's go ahead and bring this over and we'll dump this on there we go now this was a 50 quart bag and of course this isn't gonna completely cover super deep but but we're adding a little bit on top just to sort of cover that compost layer. All right guys, so that's spread on top and this bed is ready to plant. This is the version Japanese Holus popcorn. So you want them about 10 inches uh, apart, but I like doing staggered rows and I'm actually not doing rows. Uh, this is gonna be a block um, planting because I don't have a, a lot of space I can reach in you know, uh, over top of this because it's only four feet wide. I can walk on this side, I can walk on that side, I can reach in and grab them. And if you have them blocked together and closer together, you've got more chance of per pollination because they're wind pollinated. Planting them in rows is really for if you've got a very large area and you need to walk in between. Uh, you definitely want to give them some room, but they need about 10 inches, you know, eight, eight to 10 inches spacing in between each row so you could actually technically get another row 10 inches behind it and 10 inches and 10 inches i'm going to do each one of my rows a foot it says 36 feet you know anywhere from 30 to 36 feet for most corn but again we're block planting it's a little different because we have a smaller space i need that pollination all right so i use a tape measure and i make my holes so you want them about one and a half to two inches deep so we're just going to make a one and a half to two inch depth hole. I'm going to do every foot. You might go, wait, I thought it was 10 inches. And yep, but you'll see. So we want about 10 inches roughly from each, which is right there. So there's 10 inches. And then if you go like this, that's 10 inches as well. So there's the next hole. So this is nine inches away from this row. So I'm gonna set out this uh, two right there. I'm gonna put a little mark so I know that's where this is going, right in the center of each. All right, so I've got 12 in each row, 12 holes in each row, and I've got five rows. So that's 60 total plants. I might have enough with the popcorn we will see if i do one per but i don't want to chance it so i'm going to do two per and that'll get me about halfway i don't want to end up having an issue of germination and having holes and that's all we're doing is just kind of dropping them in now it's going to rain later today so it's good timing to plant i'm going to get good rain i will water this in first of course all right so this is the next one. This is a Hickory King 
dent it's a it says white corn but it's a dent corn I'm not sure how many seeds I'm gonna end up getting here start with one and make sure that we've got enough here well it's good I didn't put two per hole initially because that's all I got left so I'm gonna take just a couple random ones and stick some doubles in there we'll see how this germinates all right so i always like to do this guys this is april 26th is when i planted this all these are in the ground i just got to water them and now we can see how long it takes for them to come up and i believe it's about seven to ten days before you start seeing them pop up so I'll have to come through and water every single day to make sure that this ground stays moist until I see a sprout. And then I'll go down to twice a week until they start flowering and tasseling and then I need to get more water in. But we do get hot here now. Where you're at, you might not need this much water, but it gets so hot and dries out that soil so quick. So let's get the hose and water it in. So I just wanna talk about kind of why I'm planting corn. So right before this, like I said, I had some wheat growing or actually barley. Wheat and barley are both very shallow rooted plants, but corn has quite a bit larger root system. I mean, they're not super deep, but I've read that they can reach down to up to five feet, which is deep. So I'm hoping that after this wheat, which was a shallow root system, allowed me to break apart the soil and uh, everything, that the corn is gonna reach down deep and start breaking the soil out a, a little bit deeper and then after I grow this, then I can come in with something like buckwheat if there's enough time in the year to get that in uh, to then be another shallow rooted system to then kind of help the, the surface a little bit more. And we'll just kind of alternate deep and shallow, bring up as much nutrients as we can deep inside the ground and then utilize that on the surface and then back and forth. Um, I really want to get buckwheat in at one point because it produces a whole bunch of vegetation and then I probably not use it for harvesting for the grain of it. I mean, it's a pseudo grain, it's not a real grain, but it produces a whole lot of vegetation that is just gonna help improve the soil and then I can kill it you know, do a kill and drop, let that, you know, tarp it. And then come this winter, I can throw in daikon radish on top of that. And then that'll shoot in super deep. So that's the plan. That's, that's kind of my schedule here on this bed. Hopefully next year, we'll get some of the best soil uh, from doing all that. Well, check that out, guys. We have sprouts on every single one. Now, these came up three days ago. I just didn't have a chance to get out here and film this. Today is May 3rd, so it didn't take long. They're getting quite tall for being brand new seedlings. And I will say, I think these are better starts. They're growing a little faster, a little better than those did when I first planted those. So that means this soil is gonna be a little better. These will get a little healthier. Well guys, today is May 7th, just 10 days after I planted these seeds in the ground, 10 days. And look at this corn. I mean, some of the tallest ones are already eight or nine inches tall, which is crazy because it took three weeks before these were five inches tall. So these are growing a whole lot better. Now, I did amend this. I put a lot of nitrogen in the soil, so that could be helpful. The other thing I was thinking that could be why these are growing so much faster is that the sun is a little stronger now. I planted these a little early. Well, I am so excited to show you guys this. This is the corn that I planted literally one month ago, April 26th. And as you guys can see, it's May 24th. And if you look at the calendar, it's exactly four weeks since I planted this corn. And this corn is almost as tall as that. The amendments I did with this are really the key and why this is growing so good. And it's so green comparably. This is kind of like a muted, like a lighter green. It's dying back, it's not doing very well. My sweet corn just didn't didn't do as well as I was hoping this year, but the dent corn and the popcorn are doing great. I had put a whole bunch of nitrogen in the ground, but I'm going to do it again. We are over knee high. Okay, so knee here and we're into it. So right around knee high, maybe a little over for the dent corn. That's a bigger variety. This here, not quite knee high, but this is a shorter variety. This only gets to four 
maybe five foot this gets nine foot so uh, apparently i don't think it's going to get that because again even though i amended this soil it's just not as good as what it should be it'll take a few years for me to build up this soil and get it soft fluffy good soil for the roots to penetrate deep and uh it's still we've still got some hard soil underneath the stuff that i the amendments i did but in the meantime it is growing and even this even this that didn't do great I still got ears growing on it. Are they going to be good ears? No. See, there you go. There's some ears. And are they going to be big, juicy, plump ears of corn? No. But will they taste good? Yeah, I'll probably be able to harvest some, hopefully, as long as there was good germination. So today, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adding some fertilizer to this and some compost. But before I do that, I want to make sure I pick all the weeds. So we're going to pull up all the weeds and this process, what we're going to end up doing is going to end, is going to help keep those weeds down a little bit more. So then I'm going to take this, this is blood meal, which is mostly nitrogen, pretty much all nitrogen actually. And that's what they're starving for. Kind of a, a row, we're going to, right in between each one of these. And this stuff's pretty inexpensive, but I did use a fair amount just now. So this is, I believe, around $10 a bag, and I probably used a quarter of the bag, so about $2.50 worth of fertilizer there. And then the compost. So normally, after adding whatever fertilizer you use, they'll mound up next to the corn in the row and mound the soil up over the fertilizer, so that way the fertilizer breaks down and is able to feed the corn. I'm gonna add compost on top. Really good stuff, by the way. Now this bag, you can get less expensive compost. This bag probably costs, I think it was like $7. And as you can see, I'm, all I'm doing is covering that blood meal. I'm just putting it on top and then, and then I'll water this in and that should start breaking down that blood meal allowing this uh, fungi that's in it to start doing its work and breaking that down. And there we go. I used up the whole bag, about right amount. All right now, a crucial step is to water this all in, especially if you've got a bright sun shining down and you don't have any rain in the forecast. That sun can kind of kill off all the beneficial stuff that you put in the soil, especially that compost. So the compost has living organisms in it and the sun is known to sterilize things. So that would basically kill off the sunshine on it would kill off all those good beneficial microbes. But if you heavily water, a lot of those microbes are gonna be washed down into the soil. Then it's gonna be protected by that layer of compost on top. So whatever gets in right now is gonna start growing and feeding the soil. So like I said, today is May 24th and we are exactly four weeks from when we planted this originally. So I just can't wait guys uh, to see what will happen in another couple days. Uh, so this dent corn is 100 and I want to say 20 day corn. So we're only 30 days roughly into it. So we've got quite a while until we can be harvesting this. This is only 80 day. So we've only got another 50 days for these. So that's, that's another month and a half. Well, thanks for watching everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and it was informative for you. If you guys like this kind of content, please subscribe and hit that bell notification for future video updates. Also, if you guys could hit the like button, it would really help me and the channel out. I will see you on the next video. Now you guys try to escape the daily grind.